Good morning, good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church of Easton. I'm Pastor Stephanie, and I welcome you to this time of worship. And some of us have been downstairs doing crafts and maybe having some coffee and some goodies. But I believe that there was enough left over. I'm going to look, um, I'm going to look at Peg and Larry. I think there's enough left over that we're going to invite people to come down afterwards. Is that right? Yes. Okay, I got a thumbs up. So if you would like to come downstairs for fellowship after worship, you're welcome to do so for some goodies and coffee and um, hot cocoa. We had a wonderful time this morning doing uh, some crafts and uh, getting in the Advent spirit. So uh, thank you for folks who helped make that possible. We have a few other announcements. Um, this is Pasta Sunday. Uh, I neglected to bring the pasta basket inside the service, sorry. Um, it's out by the door um, on the parking lot side. If you would like to um, drop off your pasta there, or if you are somebody who is not physically here, you can drop it off on Tuesday as well. And again, that helps us feed our neighbors here in Easton through Project's um, uh, food pantry. So we have another possibility for this season helping our neighbors. And Julie's going to talk about that um, from our deacons. We've call, I've heard us call it, no, come on. I've heard, I'm, I'm filling space while you walk. <laughs> there we go. You, co you come here. Um, I'll let Julie speak. Good morning. This morning, um, and well, for this Christmas season, we are going to partner with uh, for Third Street Alliance, which provides um, shelter for women and children, often coming from leaving abuse situations. And when they leave, they often leave with, with nothing. And so their mission is to help give families temporary housing and then move them into permanent situations. And in the past, we've, we've partnered with them and we get to buy fun toys and wrap them up. And they've asked us this year to please not do that. And this is why. Um, there are two things. They've, they have asked us instead for gift cards because it allows families to buy the critical items that they need when they're moving in. Um, and then online, you actually can still buy toys. If you go to their Amazon wish list, there are toys and things that are listed there. They've made it a little more standard so that the children, when they come or when they leave and Christmas time, they're going to get kind of some standard things that are provided. They will get like a, there's some comforters, they're real cute, um, matching sheets and some toys. And so it's a little different than we've done it in the past. Um, what we're going to ask that you do that on your own. But we want to acknowledge that as a community here, what we're doing. They also asked, they, they told me that it's sometimes really hard for them to acknowledge people. Um, when they get things from Amazon, they often have no name on them. That's just how it's shipped. So um, Dahlia and I are going to go downstairs and be putting some ornaments together. And if you have made a gift, we ask that you, on your way out, um, we have our angel tree that's out in the lobby. And you can actually just add that. You can say what you gave. And if you want an acknowledgment, you can put your name on it. And we will give those to the folks over there. They said they wanted to be able to send thank you notes. Um, but even if you don't, if you want to remain anonymous, if you just write what you gave, that will help us to kind of have an, an understanding of how well this worked for us. So thank you for your showing your gift of love to our neighbors. And if you have questions or want me to, um, if you want to make the gift card donations, you can give them to the office all through December or give them to myself and I will turn them over. And if you need help ordering any of that, please let me know as well. Thank you. Other announcements. Uh, if you would like to um, order a poinsettia and have it in this space um, for in remembrance of someone, you have poinsettia order sheets. You can also do this online. Um, and the order sheets are all, uh, out in our hallway here. But as all things, you can also call the office. So poinsettias and I'm. Um, 
we will continue to have midweek meditations during December. I'm uh, looking at our announcements. But Brunch Bunch is going to be coming back. Um, it's very exciting. <laughs> Yay! Um, if you are somebody who is ready to enjoy some fellowship and um, are comfortable going out for uh, lunch, they are going to begin on December 12th. And it will be that regular cycle every month. Is that right? Um, I'm looking at Ruth Ann, um, who is sort of our organizer. And that's simply an opportunity for folks to go to lunch together and just have some fellowship. So um, please uh, let Ruth Ann know if you would like to go so they can have the appropriate space. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always call the office or reach out to Ruth Ann. But we're very excited that that is happening again. Choir rehearsals are happening. Friends, we are busy. And of course, now weather is an issue on top of everything else. So it looks like there might be snow this Wednesday. Yeah, Elizabeth's looking ahead. And um, if that turns out to be the case, she may be in touch with choir members to practice on Tuesday. And I'm assuming that will go for bells too. So if you um, are a bell ringer or a singer, uh, watch the weather and watch for a communication from Elizabeth or Gloria. And yes, if you still want to ring, there is still space for ringers. If you would like to um, participate in our bell choir, there is space for you. And let's see if we have any other announcements. If you haven't yet seen, we do have the financial review paperwork from our auditors. If you would like to see that, it's in the office. Are those the announcements that I needed to make? Did, do I, I have two more? OK. Oh, ushers needed. <laughs> um, we are lucky to be able to be back um, in worship together, and we do need some help with ushering. Um, it's not as advanced as it used to be. It really is handing out bulletins. It's welcoming folks. Um, it's watching our um, donation plate. It's very simple. So if you might be willing to usher, please let us know. Uh, we could use that help, and we really do need help on Christmas Eve. We are going to have an in-person service, a hybrid where we stream, and we want to be COVID safe. So we will be seating families together, but also trying to social distance as much as we can. We may need to open up the balcony depending on how many people we come. So if you might usher on Christmas Eve, it'd be very, it, we could use your help. So um, those are our announcements. Today, friends, if you are online, it is Communion Sunday. So if you are um, having communion at home, I invite you to have those elements ready. And for those of us who are here in this space, we will be um, sharing communion together. And I will be offering, uh, inviting folks to come forward, those who can, and then bringing it to folks who prefer to be seated. So. Um, We'll come to that towards our end of our service. With all of these wonderful things in the life of this busy congregation, I invite us to turn our hearts now to worshiping God. Would you turn to your bulletins and join your voices with mine as we hear God's call to us to worship in this beautiful Advent season? Watch and wait, for Christ is coming. Let us light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. The simple beauty in these candles reminds us of the hope and peace we have in Christ. We watch and we wait for Christ's coming, and we rejoice. And before we begin to sing, uh, it has been called to my attention that we missed some of the words for this wonderful hymn. So please note that in the refrain, when it says, people look east, there are additional three words. <laughs> people look east and sing today is, are the additional words. So please join your voices as we sing this Advent hymn. Thank you. 
this goes up in there. Our first lesson for today as we light the candle of peace is from John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him no one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Thanks be to God. The can these candles in peace, Jesus, the light of the world, shines for us. O oh, gracious God, continue to shine in our lives. Remind us in this season of watching and waiting that you are near, that your light shines brightly for us. Come, Emmanuel, O oh, come. Amen.
Our second lesson comes to us from Luke 2, verse 7. Very short lesson. Listen to God's word. And Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Thanks be to God. Friends, do you know the scripture that talks about the innkeeper? Have you heard the Christmas story? Right? There's an innkeeper, isn't there? That scripture that we just read is, is where we get our innkeeper idea from. Because there was no room in the inn. We've added this figure. Well, who kept the inn? The innkeeper, of course. That is the only place where we have the innkeeper. Where do we get our ideas and experiences around Christmas? I wonder what puts you in the Christmas spirit? Are there any objects or um, sights or even smells that put you in the Christmas spirit? Anyone? I really want you to answer. <laughs> Music. Absolutely. Cinnamon. Oh, except for when you walk into the stores and they have them like right next to it and it overwhelms you. It's a little much. But yes, I hear that. Candles. Now from you, I, that could have been handles, but, but that was candles. <laughs> Lights. Setting up the crash. Who puts up a nativity scene still at home? Anyone? Or more than one? <laughs> right? Friends, um, there are things, there are sights and smells and objects, like candles that remind us that we are entering a sacred time. During this season, we celebrate the incarnation of God. The incredible idea that the one who created the universe would come and live as a flesh and blood human being. The word of God born in flesh and blood as a tiny baby named Jesus. Holy days. In the ancient world, there was a hard line between what was holy and what was not, I guess, profane, not holy. What was holy and sacred and what was earthly and ordinary. These days, if I ask you to point to something holy, what would you point to? Do we even have a concept of that? What's holy? What is something that is holy? The cross. The Bible. I'm so glad nobody is saying Swiss cheese, because I know some of you. You might go there. What is holy? What do we hold as sacred? What does that mean as we enter these holy days? We might say this church is holy. We might say the chalice that we use for communion is holy. We might say the water that we use for communion is holy. To be holy, do you know what that means? It simply means to be set apart. Or better yet, something is holy when it has a divine purpose a godly purpose. Water, when we baptize a baby or an adult or a teen, when we baptize anybody, guess where that water comes from? The faucet, exactly. It's just tap water. 
it is only holy because we take the ordinary thing, water, and we set it aside for such an important thing, to welcome a child into the community of Christ. Holy means to be set apart. Communion. That bread, guess where it came from? Came from ShopRite yesterday, and it was shared with Pilgrim Presbyterian Church because it was split in half, and half went with my husband to his church, and half is here. Uh, Cheryl saw me earlier in the parking lot. She started to get suspicious because I was hanging out on the corner, and a car drove slowly by and rolled down its window and outreached the package. It was the bread because I forgot it this morning. It's just bread. It's just bread. Now, sometimes our dear uh, folks might bake that bread special for us. But the bread is important because we set it aside. We set it aside. We are about to enter, we are in a holy season, the season of Advent. And there's all these things around us that are happening, that are lovely, that are lovely things, that are traditions, but they don't necessarily have anything to do with the birth of Christ. So how do we, the people of God, how do we make this time holy? How do we do that? And I want to invite you to consider some ordinary objects that can remind you of this holy season. We're going to set them apart so that they will have a godly purpose. And this is the first object. I wonder how many of you can reach for your keys right now. Anybody have keys on them? Give me a jingle. I live with these. Now I was thinking if you're younger you might not have keys. I don't know. Keys. Keys, they, they live in my pocket or my purse, and around here I have to wear them around my neck because we have to open all the doors. Keys can be a reminder of that innkeeper, that one line from our scripture today that said that Jesus was born in a manger because there was no room in the inn. Some people like to speculate what would have happened if the innkeeper made the choice to unlock the door and open it wide? Right there in that innkeeper's presence, the creator of the universe would have been so near. But because of the busyness and the fullness of that inn, there was no room. God makes a way. So the baby was born in an ordinary manger. Now scholars actually speculate that it is likely that where baby Jesus was born was maybe in the home of a relative. If, if the, the places to go, the inns to go were full, it makes sense that Joseph would have found a cousin or somebody that let them in. And we often imagine a barn kind of in the backyard but in this Middle Eastern time, it is likely that the animals really sort of lived with the family. So Jesus was born right where Jesus needed to be born. An ordinary object like a key, every time we take it out, every time we fumble for it, can remind us if we are making room for Christ in our lives and in our hearts this year. Something as simple as that. If you came to our workshop this morning, you have a key on your, on your Advent wreath. And I hope that key reminds you. Where did I put it? I have a gift. Somewhere I have a gift for you. Oh, I already brought it down. <laughs> if you are somebody who could not join us this morning, I have keys for you that I invite you to maybe put on your keychain. Slightly different, 
It's not an actual key, it's a craft key. And it's a little note card that says the innkeeper's prayer. It says, Mary and Joseph had come to stay, but each lodging place turned them away. At the last place they tried, still no room at all, except for a simple hay-filled stall. Thanks to one keeper's kindness to needy strangers, Jesus' life began safe in a lowly manger. The innkeeper's key is a symbol of how a simple act fills the world with love. Keep this key to remember God's love is the reason we are filled with blessings each Christmas season. A simple key set apart so that we might be intentional as we come into this Advent season. Let us sing our next hymn, number 23, Angels We Have Heard on High. Our third lesson. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, watching over the, their flock at night. 
An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Thanks be to God. Those shepherds out there in the fields, what strange messengers that God chose to be the first to tell the good news to. Friends, during Advent, we we recall that God so loved this world, so loved us, that the extraordinary, the heavenly, the divine became ordinary. Jesus was ordinary and extraordinary all at once. He was holy because he had a divine purpose. Love was born to walk this earth and to shine so that we would know God fully. It's why the shepherds are the perfect messengers for the angels to speak to and to announce Christ's birth. They had a purpose, those shepherds. They were out there caring for their sheep. They were protectors and nurturers. The sheep needed a shepherd, just as we need God to care for us. How many of you put on coats this morning? It's gotten cold, and apparently it's going to snow. Oh, I've actually gotten some snow already. Now, those, those coats aren't made of wool, but those coats can remind us a simple thing. A coat can remind us that this is a sacred season. Two ways. Those sheep, their wool, was needed by the community, by the families that owned them. They provided the wool and milk and meat. Don't tell the sheep that. They were important and valuable, and so the shepherds took care of them. You are important and valuable to God. And so God came into this world so that we would know God's care. And this season, we are called to think about those who need care as well. We are called to take care of each other. When we collect our pasta... That it's just, it's cans and goods that we get from the grocery store. But when we set it aside to help feed our neighbors, it becomes holy. It's important that this holy season, one of the ways that we set it aside is by being intentional about our love for neighbor. There's so many ways that we do that here. We have been incredibly blessed by our blessing box. Um, yesterday, I think we saw a couple more people take food from it. All week long, Susan's nodding her head. She was the person who was filling it this week. Our neighbors came. And we wonder if it's because it's the end of the month or because it's getting cold, but the food went really quickly. Our neighbors are hungry. God cares for us, and we are called to care for others. Every time we put on our coats, friends, Every time we put on our coats, what if we remembered God's love for us and our call to love our neighbor? Simple things. But today I don't want to just talk about caring for others. I'm going to ask you to do an activity. This is something we don't usually do. I have cards that Candy lovingly um, addressed for our special care members. And as we talk about our prayers, I'm going to ask you for your prayer concerns in a minute. I'm going to pass those around. Um, if you, we have lots of hand sanitizer, if you're, and I have lots of different um, uh, pens, 
Hopefully you feel comfortable doing that. If you need to hand sanitize in between, we'll pass that with you. But that should be a safe activity. Um, we'd like to sign cards so that our special care members get a ton of names in these cards and then we'll send them to our special care members. Our special care members are folks in our congregation who cannot come out, cannot visit, um, cannot probably get online to watch. So we would like to show them some special care this year. So I'm gonna pass those around with some pens and, um, and then I'm gonna ask you while we sign cards to also sh share some prayers so we can be concrete about our caring. I also have um, some blank um, happy birthday cards. Natalie Hoff is one of our special care members and we know that um, she's going to be particularly alone this birthday. We would just like to, uh, she's turning 80, so we would like to celebrate. So if you also would like to um, send a card, there are birthday cards here um, for Natalie. Can you just take a card and a pen and then pass it? and when you're done pass it I'm just gonna spread these around and we'll we'll just keep circulating them does that make sense we'll share a little holiday cheer um, I'm gonna stay here in the center aisle and then you can pass them over to the side aisles if you don't mind otherwise we'll be here till Tuesday Pen would be good. We'll sign and pass and just circulate, and um, we can maybe do this a little bit after service too. These are these are um, postcards that uh, we had of the sanctuary, and so we're just using those. Um, and these are just well wishes. It could be Merry Christmas, whatever you'd like. Um, these will, the names of the folks are on the cards. Oh, so if you'll all pass them to the sides and to the back and just pass them around. Um, and I'll give some more. Pen. Oh, somebody already has their pens out. <laughs> Switch. It's okay. You'll have to get up. I know this is, this is unusual. I'm doing something a little different. Thank you, Elizabeth. Would you, would you pass um, some pens around? If anybody wants a clean pen, they're worried about sharing a pen. As we share prayers and do our cards, it's okay to do two things at once. I just want to acknowledge that Jim is here today. Jim, it's wonderful to see you. And um, our, our hearts are still with you. We miss Lavona and um, just our deepest condolences. So it's, it's wonderful to have you with us. Anyone else we should be thinking of in our prayers? I mentioned um, that uh, Natalie is having an 80th birthday. If anybody has been in touch with Kathy Burnett, we've been trying to get in touch with her. She also has a birthday coming up. Oh, Peg's waving. Good. Okay. I'll, I'll chat with you. We want to... Absolutely. Prayers for the families 
of those involved in the Michigan shooting. Friends, you don't have to put your names on the cards. You can just be well. Other prayer concerns or celebrations. Ella is turning 16 this week. For those of you who remember Ella singing on Christmas when she was this little, it's been amazing as we've gathered a little bit more during COVID to see some of our children growing. Yes, as, a, as we talk about those coats, one of the things that it's helpful to be mindful as we, we go into our own homes, we open our own doors and walk in, as we put on a coat, be mindful of those folks who during this cold season do not have a warm place to lay their head or whose place needs to shift because they don't have a permanent place to lay their head. We think some of the f friends who are using our blessing box are folks who are living down at the river. We will have more signups for the blessing box come January. We will have more signups for Safe Harbor to feed our homeless neighbors. Okay, so January is covered. It looks like we need uh, February and March for Safe Harbor. Any other special prayers? Prayers as people figure out travel and as they travel. And, and then we <laughs> says the pilot, please keep traveling. <laughs> Definitely prayers as we continue to navigate how to be safe during COVID. As we figure out what this um, Omicron variant means. And Thank you for being good sports and trying something different. Prayers for children um, and vaccination and school and how that all is worked out in the lives of our kids. And their teachers. Thank you. You can just leave the cards in the pew and I will collect them. And if you'd like to take a card um, to send a birthday card to Natalie, there are some cards here from the deacons. As we finish that up, I invite you to join your hearts with mine in prayer. Let us pray. O oh, Good Shepherd, you care for us each and every day. You extend your blessings and abundance, and we pray that you give us eyes to see. We pray that as we feel your closeness in this season and celebrate your birth, that we are reminded of your call to love our neighbor, to make choices each and every day, ordinary, simple, little things that can make a difference in someone else's life. 
Thank you for the ongoing service of this church and partners in mission and ministry, such as Safe Harbor, who helps our homeless neighbors be warm and safe this time of year and all year. For the work of Project that gives emergency services to our neighbors, helps our children in this community with their education, and of course, who has the food pantry that feeds our neighbors, continue to challenge us to be a people who gives as we recognize the abundance of your love for us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. As we talk about giving, friends, we make our offering today with peaceful hearts, trusting that the Holy One who comes to us will bless us, bless our gifts and our lives, to make us signs of peace in this world, in this world that God loves. If you are giving today, there is a plate at the back of the sanctuary, and we welcome your gifts online or through the mail. Thanks be to God. As we come to the table, we are reminded that this is the table of Jesus Christ, a banquet prepared for everyone, all who seek to be nourished and sustained in the journey of faith, all who seek wholeness and compassionate paths to peace and justice are welcome here. Friends, may God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is good to give God thanks and praise. And we bless you, O breath of peace, giver of life, source of love that knows no boundaries. Your song of wisdom rang out before the world began. And throughout the ages, your song of liberation has impregnated us with your hope for the world. A hope where those who were considered last and least are first and most, where violence is overcome with the power of your ancient love and all siblings work together for peace. You bring our longings to birth 
and send us prophets to awaken us to your approaching advent among us. And we thank you, we thank you for those who, like Mary, have the strength and courage to give birth to your love in this world. For those who, like the shepherd, for the shepherds who are willing to speak the good news, who dare to seek out the child of Bethlehem, and for those who, like the wise men, wise ones, actively challenge violent and oppressive powers. We praise you that your everlasting light is shown to us in womb and tomb, in cradle and cross, in stable and at table. As we wait and watch for your coming among us, we proclaim your goodness. Dying, you destroyed death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. In this time, we remember the feast. We pray for all who are in sorrow or in pain, all who are ill or alone, all who are close to our hearts. We pray for those who live in fear, with hunger, with violence, with bigotry, for all who the world counts as last and least. We pray for the church and its many ministries, for nations as they strive for peace and justice. O God of hope, make this bread the means of our rebuilding, this cup the medium of our transformation, and this table the foundation of our renewal, and this community the place of our rebirth. Amen. Friends, we remember a time when Jesus gathered with his friends and he took bread, ordinary bread, and he blessed it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you share this, remember me. On that same night, Christ took cup. It was filled with the promise of God's love for God's world. Jesus said, remember the covenant that I make for you, for this is a new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you share this, remember me. Friends, this is the bread of life and the cup of salvation. I invite you to share in this feast. For those who are able, I will invite you to come forward and take a piece of bread and a cup, and you can leave the empty cup in your pew. Again, there's hand sanitizer at the door. You need to clean your hands. Friends, if you are someone who is not able to come forward, please just stay seated, and I will bring you the communion when everyone has been served. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. May the people come.
never hunger again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, may these everyday, ordinary pieces of bread and sips of juice remind you of God's love shared with you, not just in this Advent season, not just in the season of Christmas, but throughout your entire lives. Thanks be to God. And now I send you, fed, reminded to serve our neighbors, and reminded to be watchful as we move through this season for signs, for patterns that help us to be a holy people. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, be people of peace. Let peace live in your heart and share the peace of Christ with all whom you meet. Share peace by acting out of compassion and not fear. Share peace by listening to all sides of the story. Share peace by praying for our world. In this Advent season, may we see, feel, and share peace. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share peace and hope with those who you meet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>